The Air Boss is one of the personnel responsible for ensuring the smooth execution of various operations on a carrier. Let's take a look at what a typical day is like for an Air Boss serving on a United States Navy aircraft carrier. The Air Officer, who's also referred to as the Air Boss, is responsible for all aspects of operations involving aircraft, including the hangar deck, the flight deck, and airborne aircraft up to five nautical miles away from the carrier. This responsibility is shared with his assistant, who's often referred to as the mini boss. Primary flight control, also known as the tower, is where he and his assistant keep visual control of all aircraft operating within the carrier control zone, which extends from the surface up to 2,500 feet and has a circular limit defined by a five nautical mile horizontal radius from the carrier. This officer is typically a commander in most cases, they are a former commander who has been chosen for promotion to captain. Yellow is the typical color of the working jersey that an air boss wears, but an air boss is free to wear any color jersey he wants because he is the representative of everyone who works on the flight deck, in the hangar bay, and in aviation fuels. Additionally, the air boss is accountable for maintaining visual control over all aircraft that are active within the control zone. Under Case 1 and Case 2 conditions, this responsibility may be extended outside of the control zone to encompass all aircraft that have switched to the air officer's control frequency. The air officer can exercise control outside of the control zone to carry out specific operations such as bombing a sled or conducting air demonstrations. In addition to this, he is the authority in charge of clearing the control zone. Before entering the control zone, those agencies that intend to operate must first receive consent from the air officer. This clearance will include the following information. Operating instructions for avoiding other traffic as required, information concerning hazardous circumstances, and altitude and distance constraints at which the aircraft may be operated. Before embarkation, helicopter units will be certified for use on shipboard missions by their respective unit commanders or other authorities. It validates that the unit has completed all the necessary training for the parent service in preparation for the mission. Before operations, the unit officer in charge will send diagrams of embarked aircraft to the air officer, as well as to crash and salvage parties when they request them. If the air department on the ship has not worked with the training aircraft in a long time, or if it has newly assigned personnel, the aircraft would be landed and shut down on the flight deck at the beginning of training, and a comprehensive walk around of the aircraft would be carried out at that time as well. This assists in familiarizing LSEs and fire and rescue personnel with the placement of emergency equipment on the aircraft, including fuel ports, fire bottles, release handles, and emergency equipment. Arming is another function that the air boss is actively involved in performing. The equipping of weapons will take place in a specific location that has been designated for that purpose. When forward firing weapons are involved and the store's loading checklists need it, the area in front of the aircraft will be cleared and kept clear until the launch is finished. Arming will only be done once the aircraft has come to a complete stop and control of the aircraft has been handed over to a supervisor of the arming crew. The crew is required to obey predetermined arming signals that have already been established. After the pilot has indicated that he's ready for takeoff and the tie-down chains and chocks have been removed, the air boss will formalize the evacuation paths for each type of aircraft to provide the arming crew members with the safest possible working environment. The air boss is not the only person who monitors the activities on an aircraft carrier's flight deck. Let's have a look at the officers that work closely with the air boss on an aircraft carrier daily. The first is the catapult officer. Catapult officers, sometimes called shooters, are commissioned officers responsible for all catapult maintenance and operation elements. They ensure enough wind in the right direction and at the right speed across the deck and adjust the steam settings on the catapult so that the aircraft has enough speed to fly when released after the stroke. Additionally, it is up to them to indicate to the pilot that he or she may begin the takeoff procedure. Another is the aircraft handling officer. The aircraft crew officer, also referred to as the aircraft handler or simply the handler, is in charge of the layout of aircraft throughout the flight and hangar decks. The handler's responsibility is to prevent a locked deck 
which occurs when there are already an excessive number of aircraft in the area and no additional planes can land until the deck is reorganized. The handler is also involved in flight deck control, which is a department in which scale models of aircraft positioned on a representation of the flight deck are used to simulate the actual aircraft status on the flight deck. Additionally, there are aircraft directors. As their job title suggests, aircraft directors coordinate all the movement on the flight decks and hangars of an aircraft carrier. They are aircraft bosun's mates in the enlisted ranks. They're most commonly referred to by the slang name bears, while those that operate in the hangar are referred to as hangar rats. On some airlines, commissioned officers with the job title flight deck officer are also responsible for directing planes. During flight operations or a flight deck respot, there are normally between 12 and 15 yellow shirts present on the flight deck. These yellow shirts report directly to the handler position on the flight deck. Although aviation directors are frequently employed at airports on land, their purpose is especially important on a ship's flight deck, a tight environment where aircraft are constantly taxied within inches of one another and where the ship is frequently rocking and pitching beneath them. Aircraft are directed by directors who wear yellow uniforms and communicate with a complex system of hand signals or lit yellow wands at night. The air boss of an aircraft carrier also works with the landing signal officer. The landing signal officer, or LSO, is a qualified and experienced pilot who is in charge of the visual control of aircraft in the terminal phase of the approach immediately before landing. This phase of the approach is immediately before touchdown. LSOs are responsible for ensuring that approaching aircraft have the correct configuration and monitoring the aircraft's glide path, angle, altitude, and lineup. Voice, radio, and light signals are the primary modes of communication with landing pilots. Last but not least, the officer in charge of the arresting gear. The arresting gear officer is in charge of the functioning of the arresting gear, adjusting the settings, and monitoring the status of the landing area deck. The deck is either clear and ready to land aircraft or foul and not ready for landing. Depending on the aircraft type, the arresting gear engines will apply a different amount of resistance, also known as a weight setting, to the arresting cord. The Airbus works hand in hand with these officers to ensure that all operations on a flight deck go as smoothly as possible. That'll be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.